Wow, was that a real pterosaur? A dinosaur's really not extinct? Well, keep watching and you'll find out. So a few weeks ago, I get sent this video from Bill's channel of a supposed real pterosaur flying through the sky. And Bill asked me, Pete, is this really a real pterosaur or is it fake? And if it is fake, how would you go about making it? So of course I jumped at the chance to explain how this could be done. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't checked out Bill's channel yet, do it now and watch his video before jumping back and watching this one. Hello, bubble gummies, and welcome to a new feature that we're doing, which is called the Unexplained Explained. And if you're wondering what a bubble gummy is, well, that's you guys. And the only way you can become a bubble gummy is by subscribing and giving these videos a thumbs up. It also means that you'll get all of the updates on our fun videos as well as our series on Five Nights at Freddy's. So remember to hit that subscribe button and also the alert bell so that YouTube will tell you when we've released a new video. So if you've just come over from Bill's channel, hello and welcome, and you probably already know the answer to is this pterosaur real or fake? Which is of course, it's fake. So let's now show you in a little bit more depth about how you could fake this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is find a 3D model of a pterosaur. You can easily find these online as there are a number of sites that sell them. I bought this one for $1, or if you've got skills in 3D then you could always model it yourself. First I added a simple colour to him so he just looked a little bit more realistic. You can spend a lot more time on this if you want, adding things like the veins in the wings or the wrinkles in his skin, but for this experiment it just wasn't needed. Next we need to add what are called joints. These are very much like our bones in our body and by attaching them to the model we can make it move. You then need to add what are called controls. These are very much like adding strings to a puppet and allow the animator to grab them and move the joints easily. Due to this being a quick demo, I simply had his wings flap up and down with a little bit of head movement. You can tell the computer to loop this animation so that you don't have to spend ages keeping his wings going. So the next thing was to venture outside and film some blank sky making sure I moved the camera across the skyline as if I was really seeing something amazing. Back in the computer it's time to add our pterosaur to the sky. At the moment it looks okay but there is a problem. The trees appear behind it when really they should be in front. To solve this we need to add what is known as a mask. A mask is a bit like a stencil in that it cuts out certain parts of an image revealing whatever is behind. So in this case we want to cut around the trees and place them on top of our pterosaur so it appears like it's moving behind them. By taking the original footage and turning it black and white, we can tell the computer that either the black or the white should be cut away. In this case, I cut away the white part, which is the sky, leaving just the trees. A final touch was to add a bit of color correction so it looked like the pterosaur was at a distance, as well as some motion blur, as fast moving things on film always have a slight blur to them. I must admit, I do think it is actually quite good that this was fake, because at the end of the day, having a bird poo land on your head is bad enough. Can you imagine one of them pooing on your head? So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video on how to create a fake pterosaur. Remember to say hi to Bill for me, and remember, don't believe everything you see. Until next time, bye for now. <laughs>